What's up guys? Sorry for the long delay and not uh, posting stuff. I've been busy working on The Witcher. I've had internet problems. I've had computer problems. So everything was kind of just stacked up and I've slowly been taking care of it. I know I'm like really late and I've been working on a lot of stuff with my other job. But I'm ready to get back on the high horse with Lords of Ragnarok. So I'm really excited. I really loved Lords of Hellas, but I didn't back it on Kickstarter, and I've been spending a long time trying to get all of the expansions and Kickstarter exclusives for it, which I don't think is ever going to happen. I wish when they were doing the campaign, they were talking about bringing back some of the Kickstarter stuff for Lords of Hellas, but that didn't happen. That being said, I went with the all-in. I even bought uh, the Sundrop Valkyrie, because this is all Sundrop, supposedly. Hopefully it is. On the side note, I will have an extra regular or regular Valkyrie because the regular Valkyrie is supposed to be not sun dropped. I don't know how that worked. I might have bought the same thing twice, but we'll find out. Bethlehem and Jotunheim. Okay. Assemble your armies with the following instructions below. So they have a little wheel dial. Nice. Venture Brook Ventures. Fix them with hot water and the other contact Game Found. And Game Found's really good about taking care of stuff. So I have no worries with that. But then again, Wicked Realm does really high quality stuff. And maybe one of these days I will get endorsements, but not today. Temples, hero tiles, slayer tokens, realm tokens. Actually gives you layouts of stuff disassembled. I also have the all-in mat, and this thing is huge. So we'll see how that works. Key concept, through victory conditions. Ragnarok the board, population strength and control, realms of the seas. I wonder how much different this place from Lords of Hell is. I didn't actually see a playthrough. We have our game set up. Even the regular board just looks really, really big. Playing the game. Special actions. Monsters and hunting. So, still hunting monsters. Still getting loot. Okay. That uh, is the rule book with no glossary or index. That's a little disappointing. We have the solo rule book. I wonder if that has anything. Set up some followers, special actions. Nope. Well, that's not great. One eighth inch punch board with all our pieces. Our five heroes, I'm guessing, because they come on these boards, it said. We have Alslang, Beowulf, Bangarithia, Ragnar, and Snorri. Muslheim. That's an interesting looking picture. And then we have backside stuff, which I don't know what that does. I'm guessing one side is for solo play, which looks like this side, and the other side is for multiplayer, which is the whole realm. Well, the solo side definitely looks the same as the Lord of Hellas, going vertically. If you don't like playing with groups, you can play the single player. But games like this are way better multiplayer. Alright, so we do have our Valkyrie Mini. Don't know why that was pressed. There's an indentation on here. That or it's actually part of the design. You can see that. Nope, it's not on any of the other ones. Hmm, I wonder what press that in there.
Okay, so I have an extra Sundrop Valkyrie, so I might be giving this away then. We have our player boards. They are not recessed on both sides. That would have been weird. So blue, green. I'm guessing that's black, or maybe that's blue. No, that's definitely black. And red. Does this slot in here? Yes, it does. Neat. Yeah, these guys look really cool. And then we have try, so I don't know where the number is going to be that matters. Got this boat. Yeah, I gotta love their uh, weird techno steampunkness of how they designed all this stuff and following the theme from Lord of Hellas. Norse mythology looking. I actually like the hyper design of like the steampunkness. Definitely adds a little bit of a uh, sci-fi bullshit to futurism. That's really neat with the banner. Shield and sword. Be nice if they actually labeled what they were, but I can live with that. I mean, they're really good looking. Wake Realms always does make really nice miniatures, and they feel good. They feel a little soft though. I don't know if that's just the way they were designed. Here we have our priests. Looking. Oh, base. Yeah, but they got some really good detail on them. If you guys are actually interested in like fine detail stuff, let me know, and I'll do. I'll start doing galleries with my videos. It is literally a Dreadnought from 40k <laughs> and MechWarrior put together. I don't know why it has trees on its back, but yeah, it's, it's very MechWarrior-ish. <laughs> oh, these are cool. Like wolves of some sort. I don't know if that's a mace in the ground. Another Titan like mech. That is pretty neat. Some type of witch. Robo <laughs> skeleton with a chain axe from 40k. <laughs> Definitely an interesting iteration of the chain axe. <laughs> That's a robot snake. I'm guessing this is Loki. Sitting on a throne. It's weird what this ruin in the back is. What do we have here? Some type of dragon. I don't know if the scaling on this is correct because I think this thing is huge. Yeah, 
Boy, these are kind of hard to put in here. I don't like that. Uh, check out this guy. I believe this is Odin. How easily does he come apart? Alright, so we got our base. Now we got our slot for our priests. Okay, so it's in the front like that. So we pray we get our legs first. Then we'll get the torso. And lastly, we get his head. I gotta say, this guy looks really, really good. Like, this is ridiculous how much detail is on him. God, this guy's cool. I uh, wish I could paint, but instead I just went with Sundrop. Because I can't paint. Now, this is Freya. Very Valkyrie like. The base is a little bit different than Odin's. I wonder why. Okay, and she splits apart at the head. So, there's the first part. Then we have this battle angel body. And we have our head. And I gotta say, that's really impressive. I'm actually glad, unlike Lords of Hellas, these guys are completely assembled. Lords of Hellas had them all separated and it was kind of wonky, but they had that really cool whip with Odin. Or not Odin, Zeus. Was it Zeus? I can't remember. It's been a while since I played that game. So we got Thor's legs. I do like these, uh, I guess, beams coming off them. Oh, okay, guys, torso. And the plastic they use for this is much better than Lords of Hellas. Lords of Hellas was kind of flimsy. But the head's going to be a little bit of a pain to take off or put on because it's such a small piece with the hammer in the way. But there's Thor with his uh, capacitors, it looks like, on the back for lightning <laughs> or thunder. So, very cool. We got our weird Euro sized cards that aren't quite Euro sized. This looks like the same dice from Lord of Hellas. I'll have to check that out later. It looks like everything will fit sleeved because of that spacer. So it looks like we still have the same combat card system, same god worshipping, and same monument system. So very neat. Let's check out these uh, monsters. So first up we have Fenir. Oh yeah, uh, Fenir. So if there's an army in the region of Fenrir, decrease the value by two. If there's no army in the region of Fenrir, move Fenrir to any adjacent region with any army. Special attack, deal two injuries. The hunting player discards one choice in ruin. Reward the ring of Avarati and Devari. This has monster on the back. Grendel. Okay. This is Grendel. So you are Grendel, Cyclops. Grendel, attack region. Armies must withdraw the region with Grendel. Discard a control marker from that region. If there is none in place, Grendel another region in the land. Do not stop. Special attack, deal one injury. The hunting player decreases chosen attributes by one. The hunt immediately ends. Reward Grendel's arm. And if you can tell, this was a uh, thing here. Heidi and Skull. I know these wolves, but I don't remember their mythology. Uh, attack region. Control the region of Heidi and Skull. Discards one chosen combat card or one chosen ruin. Then place Heidi and Skull in another region with a monument, temple, or temple. Do not stop. Spells of attack. Deal two injuries. The hunting player chooses half of their combat cards and discards them. Round it up. Reward the Ufedar cult. And these are the two wolves with the towers. 
actually really glad the artwork matches the minis too. They didn't have to put this tower in as a detail. But that's really neat. So glad about that. The troll. Ah, the troll is the 40k dreadnought. Not sure why he has trees on him. Troll, attack region. Decrease the value of one army in the region with the troll and one army in any adjacent region by one. Special attack, deal one injury, the hunt immediately ends. A monster places a hunting player's hero in a chosen region. Reward, sleeping potion. Then we have Hildura, the witch looking character. I'm not sure if that's a fox. But her mini is really, really cool. I do like the way she looks. I also like foxes. So, her attack region. Increase the value of one army in a region with Hildura in any adjacent region by one. Special attack. Hunt immediately ends. The hunting player discards all combat cards. Wow. And the reward is Hildura's trail. That's uh, pretty brutal. Oh, okay. Kind of makes sense now. And last, we have the Chainsaw Undead, the Draugr. So, okay. So the Draugr. All heroes in the region with the Draugr and all adjacent regions are dealt one injury. Special attack, deal one injury. The monster discards one control marker from the Draugr's chosen wound slot without a reward. Reward, blood of the undead. I gotta say, the art on these cards is really awesome. And last but not least, the boss, apparently, is Loki. So I was correct in that assumption. Because it was kind of the only thing that made sense with the robot serpent around his neck. So Loki has a passive skill. Armies cannot be placed or moved into a region with Loki. Loki may be hunted. Rune. Place Loki in any region and do not stop. Uh, Loki may be hunted by players with two slain monsters and one monster in a two-player game. Special attack. Deals two injuries. If the hunting player's wisdom is lower than four, the hunt immediately ends. Event activation. Draw another event card and place Loki in that region indicated by the card. I don't remember if there were bosses in Hordes of Hellas. That's pretty neat. So... That's what's in the core box. Check out the uh, stretch goals. Oh, Hell's in here. And Heimdale. And Fenrir. And the Kraken. And Jorgamunder. And whatever Skull is. Stretch goal rule book. Just two pages. That's a new region. I'm guessing that's Nebelir. I have never been good with uh, Norse mythology and pronunciations. Five player expansion, Children of Loki expansion, Guardian of the Bifrost expansion, Nebelir mini expansion, other expansions. New origins, your own new combat cards, and new monsters. And we have two new units, our heroes. Eagle the Archer and Skull the Sorceress. Special ability for Eagle. Spend one rune of your choice to grease one army value by one or deal one wound to a monster without gaining a reward in a region with Eagle or an adjacent region. Now we have Asgard. Helheim. Two parts of Helheim. Skulled. Special abilities. When a region was Skulled, gain plus one to the battle value for each different rune you have. And they added more temples. Not sure what the backside is. Okay, yeah. So this is just like the uh, Iron Fortress or Citadel for Lords of Hellas that I could never find. Oh, look at how pretty you all are. Ah, we have the pea colored army. I guess it's slightly sun dropped with a little bit of white on it. I guess you can't really put dark colors on yellow. Well, 
or those weird, not quite Euro card sizes. We have an Autonomous deck, and I think we have more combat cards. Hmm. How do you play with these guys? They didn't give you actual, like, hunt card. No. It's up here, because I am blind. And our new recessed player board. So we have Yogamander, or Jurgamander, whatever. I always call it the Midgard Serpent. I mean, he looks really cool, but he is very small. For something that's supposed to encompass the world. That or I'm getting my mythology messed up, but I am pretty sure this is the World Serpent. Deal one injury, attack region. Deal one injury to all heroes in regions adjacent to the sea with Yorgamonger. If there are no heroes in those regions, move Yorgamonger adjacent to sea and deal one injury to all heroes in regions adjacent to that sea. So he just hangs out in the ocean and hurts you. Special attack, deal one injury. The hunting player decreases their wisdom injury by one. The hunt immediately ends. Reward is snake venom. The kraken, which literally looks like a cyber demon from uh, Doom Eternal. <laughs> Except without treads. First time I've ever seen an interpretation of Kraken with crab legs. The Kraken attack region. Move the Kraken to adjacent sea and place all Drakkars in that sea on an adjacent sea of your choice. Special attack. The hunting player discards all combat cards. Then if the hunting player Drakkar is not in the sea with the Kraken, the hunt ends immediately. Reward is a giant claw. Alright, now we can go read Fenrir because that makes sense. Passive skill. Fenrir never moves. Armies cannot be placed or moved into a region with Fenrir. A region with Fenrir cannot be controlled and does not count as part of the land, meaning the land is treated as one region less. Fenrir can only be hunted by players with two slain, monster with two slain monsters already, or one monster in a two-player game. Ruin decreased the value of all armies in the chosen region by one. This special attack. Attacking player decreases two chosen tributes by one, and the hunt immediately ends. Wow, that sucks. Event activation, draw another event card. Decrease all armies that are in the region indicated by the number drawn on the card. That seems kind of brutal. And I believe this is Eagle or Archer. That cape's really cool. And then we have the Sorceress, which I don't know her name, but she's definitely holding a ram skull and wearing some type of weird crown. But she's really neat looking also. The helps with the camera. So we have his legs and what looks to be a shield of some sort. Or maybe that's, you know, the Bifrost Rejector that they stole from Marvel. The upper body. We have his great sword in the back. It's a little bent. I don't want to try that too hard. But that's really neat. And we have the tiny head, but at least it'll go straight on because there's nothing in the way. Tail is actually really neat. So we have her base. All the bases are the same. Yeah, they're all the same. That would have been really cool if they changed the bases up. So it looks like she has this really cool centipede tail on her back. I don't know why people think that's a cool idea to put. That torso is really tiny. Check out that scythe. That is an awesome, awesome scythe. And then this tiny little head. So, I'm not sure if she's supposed to be like a centipede. Because that definitely looks like a centipede on her back for this tail part. The detail on this and the work on it is actually pretty cool. It's all separate too. So that's neat, especially as nothing is broken. But yeah. So uh, next, I guess I'll open one of these small boxes. We have runes, which I believe these are just plastic runes. So the cardboard runes. Oh, that was a fail. Whatever. I don't like this box. Anymore. 
So in here we have 42 high quality runes and nine high quality rune forge models. I guess these are rune forges. Not sure if these are sun dropped. I believe they're all different. So here are the three ruins of each. Really good looking. At least they're easier to grab. And then here's our other ruins. I don't know why this ruin there's so few of. But until I actually read on how the game works, I'm not going to mess with those. So this Monster Variety Pack was really weird. It was not part of the All-In. I had to buy this separately. I didn't understand why they didn't just put it with the All-In. Right. So we have four cards, four monster types, four high-quality models, and one real book. We have Garm, Nolkin, Mare, and the Neger Hood. Nehood, Nederhugger, whatever. I fought it in God of War. <laughs> so, our little rule book is literally just a sheet. We have our four loot cards. And these seem to be all monsters. Doesn't look like there's any more bosses. Well, there's still more stuff. So, Neaterhood is this weird looking dragon tyranid thing. Like how he has one wing and the rest is just claws. That's uh, definitely some gaping dragon vibes right there, too. So, his abilities attack region and move Negor, Negor, whatever. To region adjacent to yes or drill and decrease the value of army and region by two. Special attack, get one injury, the hunt immediately ends. Place need to hunt a hunting hero in any region is adjacent to get your shield. And your reward is a dragon horn. Next we have Garm. Who I guess is this uh, dog from Ghostbusters. You guys remember that? It's definitely one of the guardians. Or gatekeeper, key master, whatever they call him. Interesting. Attack region. Choose one army on the board from those with the lowest value. Place Garm in the region of that army. Kill that army. Ooh. Gross. Special attack. Deal one injury. The hunting player discards a priest. That's gross, too. Noken, which is the bard playing thing. So we have another bard thing that has multiple arms. Looks like he has a bow or staff and a sword. So, he's kind of neat. Not sure the mythology on him. Gonna have to read that up. No can attack rune. All players discard one rune of their choice and take or take one injury. I don't know how hard runes are, so that sounds terrible. Special attack, deal one injury. Hunting player discards a control marker from the allied realm of their choice. That sucks too. Reward, enchanted violin. And last we have Mare. She does not have a face on this model. Ah, she does. It's just really hard to see. But she has a giant axe. And a backpack of cables. And she has three arms. I don't know if that's uh, myth-specific. Mare, move to attack region. Move Mare to any region with a settlement and decrease the value of each army in that region by one. Special attack, discard six cards from the monster attack deck. If there are not enough cards in the monster attack deck, the hunt immediately ends. And your reward is her hair. Hmm. Neat. Oh, this should add some more play variety to the game at least. I mean, it's not like you're going to have all these monsters out at one time. Maybe, if I feel like being really complicated. Then we have the Utgard, Realm of the Giants expansion. I have to say, these are some really small expansions, too. I'm used to Awakened Realms doing, like, 
these type boxes for mini expansion. We have some more modified locations. No, that is what we've guard is. I guess that is the land of frost giants. I like how the two player piece is bigger than the one player. Unless this isn't a one player piece. Alright, our rule book. Two pages. Realm token, realm for two players, rule book for giants. Giant monster tray, artifacts. I guess Frost Giants just kind of hang out. And there's only one card for the Giants. Since I guess they're all the same. I guess they all kind of have clubs. I believe it's that miniature specifically. So the Giants, attack region, decrease the value of one army in each region with a giant miniature by one. Special attack, hunt declare, must kill one of their armies or deal one injury, and the hunt ends immediately. Reward is the Giants' mace. So as you can see, here is our four Giants. I guess they're all the same. Seems kind of weird that you can get four giant maces. But they basically have different poses, so I guess that's kind of neat. I'm not exactly sure why they give you five of these. Especially since there's only four giants, and they all show the same thing. Yeah, that's the only card. Hmm. Frost Giant is a monster. Frost Giants cannot be controlled. When activated, roll the monster die once for all Frost Giants. Each Frost Giant only moves two by one region. Frost Giants cannot move to a region with another Frost Giant. Resolve their movement separately one by one. Each Frost Giant triggers stomp during movement. A player at the start of the hunt on the Frost Giants in a region with at least one Frost Giant miniature. If they do, place all Frost Giant miniatures in a region with their hero. When a player slays Frost Giant, they gain one miniature represent one slain monster and return the rest of the box. Okay. These all have different texts. No? It's five, the same card. Giants with a Rome bonus. Each player may only have one Frost Giant at any given time. When a player gains a Frost Giant, they replace him in a region with their army. Frost Giants can only move with the armies. Each time an army is moved or placed in a region with a Frost Giant, he can't be moved slash placed with that army. If Frost Giant is left a region without an army, remove him from the board and put him back into the supply. Before a battle of the region with a Frost Giant, players starting with the defender may decide to sacrifice their Frost Giant. Remove the miniature board and put it back to supply to decrease the value of the opponent's army in region by one. They give you five cards, but only four minis. That's uh, a little weird. And I don't remember seeing a frost giant in this box. So that kind of sucks. Yeah. Lame. And there's only one artifact. It's kind of weird that they did that. Really weird that they did that now that I think about it. They're gonna give you five of these cards. One for each player, but they didn't give you enough frost giants. No? Kinda sucks. So again, I think this expansion is available for retail. I think all the mini expansions are available for retail. Next up we have this. Seas of Aegir. A 
lot more boats. Ager and Nag Naglafar. And this new rulebook. The artifact, two side god card, 12 blessings, Naglafar boss tray. Four of each ship for each player, the monument, the boss, rule book, and ship rules. Naglafar, passive skill. Players cannot spend priests to a monument or make alliances you know, with a realm adjacent to a sea with Naglafar. I don't know if that's a mass, artillery, or a solar panel. It's literally a ship that's the boss. I was actually expecting a god or a creature. So you can't send priests to a monument or make alliances with a realm that is adjacent to sea with Naglar. Naglar may only be hunted by players that slain two monsters already or one monster in a player game. Rune, move Naglar to any sea and decrease the value of all armies adjacent to that sea by one. Special attack, deal two injuries. If the hunting player's Drakbar is not in the sea with Naglar, the hunt immediately ends. Event activation, draw the next event card and move Naglar to the sea of the adjacent region shown on the card. If the region is not adjacent to the sea, Naglar stays where it is. Then decrease the value of all armies in the region adjacent to the sea with Naglar by one. That sounds gross. I say, I do like his legs being uh, very tentacly. I like the net here too. I'm not sure if that's a cape or a throne. No, it's a cape. It's a cape of fishing nets. But yeah, he looks very alien. Very, very alien y. But I gotta say, this is a really cool idea. I like this. And last, we have the transformer head. Pop that on. And there he is. Very neat looking. One of the ships look like. Ships aren't very special. I don't know if your guys go on the ship or these are just an actual sea unit. The ships are all the same model, too. That's a little disappointing. But yeah, all the ships are the same model. So, the ghost ship is a boss. Seems weird. Last, we have the train pack. The most cosmetic thing you can get for this game. Nine realm models, 12 settlement models, and nine temple models. All right, we've got two trees. That's neat. All the settlements are different. All with hollow bases. All vacuum molded, it looks like. First up, we have this weird temple with the uh, squid arms or roots with a rune on it. Should be location specific. We got another rune on a rocky cliff. We get this uh, towering thing with the. They all have runes on them. I don't know exactly how it works yet. I will get that after I read the rules and play the game. This one looks like an hourglass. Let's pass for a uh, monument. 
That's when the really neat. It has a mark of chaos on it. Yeah, it seems like 40k inspired a lot of the art for this. Wrong, it might be the same artist. I think this one looks like a sword. Let's see the ruin there. I think this is probably the fanciest out of all of them. Not sure which way it goes. Probably that way. And then we got Illuminati holding the world hand. Now we got our temples and whatever these other things were. These are all the same too. Yep. So we have our temples. Again, vacuum folded. Definitely a different feeling plastic than from the minis. It's in the terrain box. Nothing but uh, cosmetic add ons. So I'm pretty sure that these two will be available for retail. I don't know about the two other, the terrain and the Sea of Aggir. And we have this letter always from Awaken Realms, but thank you. Dear backer, the time has come. We're thrilled you're holding this letter in your hands. Moreover, we're delighted Lord Ragnarok has arrived at your doorstep. Creating this game was a unique experience for our team and returned to the world of the mighty gods. Wielding advanced technology, previous with Lords of Hellas, we were inspired by Dark Ages of Greece. This time, with Lords of Ragnarok, we were in the ocean of Norse mythology. It was a sentimental journey for us all, albeit full of new experiences and implementing feedback which were received from all of you who fought epic battles alongside Zeus, Athena, and Hermes. At this point, we want to highlight one important thing. While this game is a spiritual successor of Lord of Hellas, it would never have been a light of day without you and your support. Once again, we have convinced ourselves and confirmed that the community focused on board games is extraordinarily creative and devoted to this hobby. The 21 days of crowdfunding this campaign spent with you and subsequent time we worked on the game and shared our progress with you are moments we'll remember for a long time. It was a pleasure to listen to your opinions and ideas, which inspired many improvements and mechanics of Lords of Ragnarok we offer you. We'll offer you. We have high hopes that as soon as you finish reading this letter, sit down to play the game, the Nordic gods will give you their blessing and help you fight the monsters haunting Midgard. After all, epic clashes with Loki, Fenrir, and Nafaya are waiting for you, so their support may provide invaluable. Remember that there are many paths to victory in Lords of Ragnarok. Plan your strategies wisely. There's always is room for some stunning, carefully planned last-minute reversals. We hope you enjoyed this experience offered by the game. You helped us create. We would like to ask for token support, and if you enjoy the adventure of the Norse God, please rate Lord of Ragnarok on Board Game Geek and share your experience with your friends and your local media channels. In the end, your feedback is what motivates to help us grow and create board games. We are grateful for being with us, and we hope to see you again. It's always nice that Awaken Realms does this. And honestly, I think Awaken Realms is one of the better companies out there. On a side note, I did Backstalker. I know I said quit backing IP games, but Stalker, it's a skirmish game. Can't be something that'll screw up. And last, another map for me. Okay, it's not too large, but it is pretty big. Two to five player side, is that what that says? And this is the one player side, okay. Okay, they just remove some spots. All right. Double stitch, double sided. Great colors. It's a nice mat. And then the sleeves. All right, they did give me, I guess that's enough sleeves for those weird Euro card sizes. 300 sleeves and, okay. So, this is the English version of a Sundropped Valkyrie. Probably going to do a giveaway in a future video with this. So, if you're interested, let me know. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And sorry about the late delay of me putting out videos. But 
If you like what I do, please subscribe. Give me likes if you feel like I deserve it. Other than that, take care and GG's.